Hi Founder fans, Jason here and today's Founder is Rufus King, the final Federalist. I'd like to give a big shout out to Matt who has recommended Rufus King on several occasions and rightfully so. If you'd like to be a patriot like Matt, check out the link below to see our Patreon page and all the fun extras we have over there. Anyway, Rufus King, as a very young man, dropped out of college to go fight with the Continental Army in the Revolutionary War. Fortunately for him, he was from a pretty well-off family and therefore was commissioned as an officer, a major to be specific, and became an aide-de-camp to General John Sullivan. And while his service in the Revolution was important, he was only there briefly because he was quickly elected to the Massachusetts General Assembly. Now after a few years, King had earned the respect of his co-workers there, and just about the time the American Revolutionary War was ending, Rufus King was sent to the Continental Congress to represent Massachusetts. And he was here for several years when he was also elected to the Philadelphia Convention, or as we know it today, the Constitutional Convention. And despite being one of the youngest members at the Constitutional Convention, Rufus King played a very important role in creating the Constitution, including sitting on the Committee of Postponed Parts. And the Committee of Postponed Parts was... Well, during the convention, there were a lot of arguments, and oftentimes what they would do is say, this is too hard to figure out. Let's just put it aside for now. And later on, the Committee of Postponed Parts was responsible for looking at these difficult questions and coming up with answers. And in that aspect, Rufus King was a very important member of the Constitutional Convention. He also would sit on the Committee of Style and Arrangement, which chose the order things were put in and the way the language was decided. Now, most of this was left up to Governor Morris, who really is the penman of the U.S. Constitution, but King did play a role in actually writing the document itself. He, of course, would sign the government, uh, and he would return home to Massachusetts right after the Constitutional Convention, but then, uh, after persuasion from Alexander Hamilton, decided to relocate to New York. And this was very fortuitous, because just about a year later, when the first United States Congress was called together, well, Rufus King was an inaugural member of the United States Senate, representing his new home of New York. He was here for about seven years when President George Washington asked for a favor. He said, hey, Rufus, can you be the new minister to Great Britain? And Rufus King said, yeah, I'll do that. So off Rufus King goes to Great Britain, and he would spend seven years as the American representative to the king and parliament. Now, again, he had done this for seven years, uh, several years, uh, through the end of the Washington administration, through the Adams administration, and Thomas Jefferson, despite being from another political party, still kept him on, uh, just demonstrating how good he was at the job and how respected he was among his peers. Rufus King does eventually decide to return home anyway, a little bit sick of being overseas, and in 1804, he is the Federalist candidate for Vice President of the United States. Uh, he would run alongside Charles Coatsworth Pinckney. Now, again, unfortunately for him, this was Thomas Jefferson's second run for president, and uh, Thomas Jefferson did very well. In fact, to this day, it is the most lopsided vote for presidency of all time. Doesn't look great for Rufus King's record, but that's okay. He and Charles Coatsworth Pinckney again ran as a ticket against James Madison in 1808. They once again lost, but this time wasn't so bad. After this, the War of 1812 comes around, and Charles, I'm sorry, uh, Rufus King becomes kind of a semi-candidate, because during the election of 1812, the war has just begun, and the Federalist Party is kind of falling apart. And there is actually no official... Federalist candidate for president. In fact, James Madison runs for his second term against a fellow Democratic Republican in DeWitt Clinton, the governor of New York. Now, most Federalists thought, okay, let's get behind DeWitt Clinton. He's more associated with our policies, so most Federalists voted for him. But Rufus King said, no, we need our own nominee. And he definitely tried to get a nominee nominated, although that didn't happen. But people took notice, because despite not actually being a candidate for president, Rufus King still got 2% of the population's votes for president. Again, despite not being a candidate. Now, another few years go by, and there's another election. And this time, James Monroe is running for president. And... By this point, the Federalist Party had eventually, essentially fallen apart. The Hart between the Hartford Convention, which made them look like traitors, and uh, policies that most people weren't agreeing with, there really was no Federalist party, party. But they did get one last candidate to run for president in 1816. And that person was Rufus King, the last great hope of the first political party. 
And unfortunately, Rufus King did not become president of the United States. I guess it's fortunate because James Monroe became president and then there was the era of good feeling. Uh, but I will note that there were three states actually did vote for Rufus King. Uh, Massachusetts, Connecticut, and Delaware. Not the biggest states, I'll grant you. But it does still point to how important he was. And Rufus King was not yet done. Because he would then become a United States Senator for six more years, representing New York as now an elder statesman, having decades gone by. And additionally, he was asked by James Mon um, John Quincy Adams, the sixth president now, to uh, return after a few decades to Great Britain and again act as minister to Great Britain, which he did for a few years before coming back home and retiring. And that's the story of Rufus King, the final Federalist. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, make sure you hit like and subscribe. If you're new here, I put out videos about the American Revolution five days a week. Uh, and again, if you want to check out my Patreon page, support this channel, much appreciated. Thank you so much. And I'll be back with another founder for you tomorrow.